Hello, how you guys doing? As you guys know, is, my name is Wichel Joseph. I'm not a financial advisor, so everything here is for educational purposes. All right, make sure you do your due diligence because um, investing in any form is risky. So um, last time I was telling you guys that trading is, is um, psychological. So I want us to um, basically go recite this um, creed out loud. You guys see my screen? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. All right, so um, anybody want to read this? Volunteer read this for me? Yeah, I see it. Oh, I got you. All right, good luck, King. All right. I'm a consistent winner. I, object I objectively identify my edges. I predefine my risk on every trade. I completely accept the risk. Or oh, I'm willing to scale back. I act on my edges without reservation or hesitation. I continually monitor my susceptibility to making errors. I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. And I never, ever violate these principles of success. All right. So, guys, these are the rules. Um, trading is attractive because it makes you feel like you have, you have freedom, do what you want. But doing what you want will be costly. So it's important to set some rules for yourself. And all and like I was going over last last time, it's all about the mentality, you know, mentality first. You know, it doesn't take time, it takes mind, you know. So I'm a consistent winner. You know, I tell myself that every day. And as I keep telling myself that, and as I keep having confidence, I keep on winning. It's like it just it just a cycle that just feeds itself, you know. And then objectively identify my edges. If somebody tell me, what does that mean to somebody? What does that mean to objectively identify your edges? Anybody? I guess basically, like, if say you got like five things that you look at, okay, just randomly, if those things don't line up, then you wouldn't really scale into a position like, okay, my probabilities of this trade are such and such percentage. You feel me? So it's like, you got to make up to that decision or you got to wait until all those things line up for you to take that trade. All right, exactly. So like you said, like if you have a checklist of things that need to line up for you to hop into a trade, if all those things are not lining up, scrap the play. Don't enter because it's better to sit on your hands and save that money for the perfect play because it will come up. And we don't get paid for our time, we get paid for our opportunity. The objectively part, that means you can't have feelings. Oh, I feel it's gonna go up. No, no feelings here. Not what you feel. You need to have evidence, okay? Um, predefine my risk on every trade. What, do you, what does that mean, somebody? What do you think that means, Sid? If, you, if you're still with us. Say that again. My bad. Uh, 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 I predefine my risk on every trade. The third line. What do you think that means? I predefine my risk on every trade. So that means you already have a risk to reward in your mind mm -hmm. of um your, your two targets. Exactly. But then the very the most important part is risk. So a lot of people trade yeah. and they only think about the upside. You have to approach, approach trading from the losing side first. Think about your loss first. Because if you ask people, Oh, um, do they accept the risk? They'll be like, yeah. Like, no, you only think about winning. Are you really okay with, with losing everything that you put in? If not, then you didn't accept the risk. All right? You guys catch that? So um, I completely accept the risk or I'm willing to scale back. So if it's if 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 I'm if the option is um a thousand dollars, right? But I might win three thousand off of it. I might look at the 3,000, but if, I, if, I, if I'm not okay with losing 1,000, then I have to scale back. But you know what? Let me put in 400. Let me put in 300. Just to scale back. And, and now if I lose it all, I'm way more content. Um, I act on my edges without reservation or hesitation. Somebody explain that to me. No emotions in the tree. No emotions. And not only that, you know your edges. So when you know, you just 
you go. When you know you go, you don't, you're not going to be like, uh, uh, oh, my checklist is here, but uh, I don't know. Like, no, like you have your process. Trust your process. All right. Because the only way you'll see if your process works is by consistently doing it over and over and over. And now after like 50 trades, 100 trades, now you can see whether this strategy is a good strategy or a wrong strategy. But if you keep bossing on strategy, 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 you're never going to really um, see, you know, um, what, what, what your edges are, if, if, it, if it's actually good, if it's actually a good strategy. So um, I continually monitor my, my susceptibility to making errors. What does that mean? Anybody? Um, for me, is you know, when you enter the market or just life itself, you know, you're always going to make errors, you know, and you always have to continue to monitor, you know, that susceptibility, you know, to air um, and always keep it in check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you, you do have to keep it in check. You have to, you have to keep paying attention to your win and your loss losing rate. You know, that's one thing. Like, I like it took me a while. Like, I, I went on um, tradingsync.com. They, they they basically have a, a digital trading journal where you can enter all your trades. And then um, it will tell you your win loss and your lose rate. I see my rate. I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "Yeah, I don't know how I make your money, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> my, 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 my lose. I definitely lose more, way more than I than I win. But because of my risk to reward, I'm I'm okay, you know. So um, I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. This is the hardest one, I think, for me anyway. So. Somebody explain this to me. What does that mean? Um, I, I can say something. I was um when I was doing the five um five minute calls um on Nadex, okay. you know, once you're in that, once you're in that trade and you see that, you see that green, you know, you want to stick in there, stick in there, mm -hmm. you know, and then you end up losing everything. You know, mm -hmm. when the market made the money available to you, like I can get a little bit more, I can get a little bit more, you know, instead of saying, you know what. I got in at 10, you know, the profit is at, you know, 20, 25, get out of there, you know, mm -hmm. take that, take that win and move on to the next trade. Yeah. That's the hardest, at least for me, that's the hardest thing is, um, cause honestly in trading, winning is more dangerous than losing because you get used to big profits and then you don't want to take small profits, but the small profits are what builds you up because at the end of the day, you just want to be consistent with winning. But you want to say something too? No, nope. all right. So, um, so yeah. So those, those are principles, and I never violate these principles of success. So these are the principles that before we trade, we want to think about this mentally. All right. So after this, um, the next important part is your budget. How much are you trading? How much are you risking? Where is your risk management at? Because this is coming from someone who's a complete beginner. Um, now they understand the rules they have to follow, but now how much money are they playing with? So I'm gonna um, share this so you guys can see. All right. So do this presentation. You guys see my screen? Slide down. Great. So budgeting, how much, how much do we play with? And this is very, very important. Very, very important. And um, this is one reason why I focus on building small accounts and um, buying options for as cheap as possible that will give you some profit. All right, so let's go to this slide right here. All right, you guys see this? All right, so you need to know your budget. So now stocks, so what, the way that we're sizing up these options is we're looking at the price of the stock 
And based off that, that can give us relative um, contract prices. So stocks that have an IV that's greater than 50%. Can somebody tell me what is implied volatility? IV stands for implied volatility. What is that? Can somebody tell me? uh the likelihood um the likelihood that it will move um in price uh you know points wise uh within that specific contract uh it's time frame expiration you know date mm -hmm. so it's the, it's the price swing the price swing how big or how small of a movement the, the price will, will move right yeah so now if you have stocks that are more volatile that that have a volatile of above 50 percent that can move more um you want to basically have the you want to have the the stock price whatever price the stock is to be about five percent of your account all right so basically let's say a stock price is fifty dollars for the stock then you want that fifty dollars to represent five percent of your entire account does that make sense so that would be a, a thousand dollar account based off that five percent if i did my math right so then um you want five to so you want to risk five to, no more than five to fifteen percent no more than fifty percent i would stick lower to the five maybe ten percent side or stick closer to the five percent side especially when you're starting off and you don't really know anything so stick to the five percent when you're starting off and um that's how much you're going to risk per trade and then per contract, you're going to risk one to five percent because what you want to do in order to maximize your contracts, you want to buy, I would say, at least three contracts. And I'll explain why um, three is a good number, because the main thing is you want to buy multiple contracts so that you can scale out and I'll go into it. So first, so more. So let's do some real numbers. So let's say you have a five hundred dollar account. So that means that. When it comes to stocks that are volatile, we're looking for price ranges of $25 max for the stock. You guys following me? You guys have any questions? I wanna make sure you guys are following me. No questions? All right, great. So that means we're risking about 25 to 75 per trade. That equates to $5 to $25 Per contract. So if you have a $500 account, you're only risking $25 to $75 max per trade. And you're only risking $5 to $25 per contract. Why? Because that falls within the, the 5 to 15% per trade and the 1 to 5% per contract. Any questions? You guys understand the can budget? You, can you ask, can you make good returns with that? Yeah, because because it's all about the returns. It's not about the dollar amount. You see what I'm saying? Or is that what you meant to ask about the dollar amount? Yeah, yeah, like the dollar amount return. Because you, you, you get the difference though between dollar amount and return. I mean, 20, so how much for $25 if, if obviously everything goes your way, would you mm -hmm. kind of like expect so, to so, get? So for example, if you get 100%, that means you double the $25 and you made $25 off of your $25. But that's only $25 as a return. Do you, do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Even though it's only $25, you still doubled up. So your return is high. You get 100% of your return. But the dollar amount is only $25. That seems small. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so 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 yeah you can because honestly if you ever look at the contracts that i trade this is my price range to be honest and i'll, I'll show i'll show you guys in a minute um i think i showed you guys the other day contracts that i bought on um spqq and sds i bought i bought them at 15 15 dollars a contract i bought three of them and then um they yesterday went to 36 a contract so 15 to 36, that's more than double. Do you see what I'm saying? So 
Yeah, no, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So that that's an example. Sure, bro. You don't need much money to start. It's about buying quality and knowing what to buy and knowing on what what moves the most. Because it's all about moves. If it moves, it doesn't matter how much you're paying for it. Um. So now, um, let's talk I about. Got a question. Go ahead. Did you also say to buy three contracts? Yes, to buy three contracts. So, <laughs> so the sum of the three should equal that one to five percent, or like each contract would be the one to five per contract. So each contract would be the one to five, and um, the okay. five to fifteen would be per trade. And this equates to these numbers right here. So if you have a five hundred dollar account, the the you're looking for stocks so with the max price of twenty five dollars a share. And now the amount you're, you're spending per contract is five to twenty-five dollars per contract. If you're buying three at twenty-five, the most you can spend is seventy-five dollars for the trade. If you're buying three at five, the most you spend is twenty-five dollars for a trade. So you can buy the contract in between those prices. Is that clear? Yeah, I was. Uh, I don't know. I I don't completely understand contracts. Is that so contract, uh, options trading yeah yeah um, so options okay. are, are when you buy an option you're buying a contract options are contracts they're not shares they're not stocks okay so these are all just three different ways to invest into the market right like the per trade and per contract in no, no, the stock so, mix so no no so this is all one and the same so when 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 you're trading um an option let's say you let's say you have 75 dollars to play with now on that trade you can buy three contracts so you can buy three contracts at 25 dollars per contract which would make so like let's say you're buying apple you can buy three contracts of apple three calls let's say you think apple's gonna go up you could buy three call options of apple right and now when you buy these contracts you're paying 25 dollars each does that make sense yeah, that, that like kind of tied it all together. When you said calls, I was like, okay, that's what contract. Yeah, I get calls. it all now. <laughs> yeah, calls is a contract. Yeah, so that's for contract, that's for trade. So basically, you know, you, you don't want to, like, let's say um, the maximum amount of money you could spend 75, you don't want to just spend $75 on one contract. Why? Because let's say you bought it at 75 and then it went to 80. Mm -hmm. You immediately sold off at 80, right? Then later on in that day, it goes to 200, 300. You, if you have more contracts, you could sell one at 80, hold the other two, sell the next one at 120. So you understand? You could scale out. Right, right. So you can basically still collect your profits and then yeah. also still exactly. kind of play around. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And this is why we, we, we recommend, well, I recommend three, <laughs> three contracts, at least, at least. Because that way I can scale out on thirds. I could sell, I could sell my first one at like 50% or 100%, and then I could sell the other one at like 100% or more than that. And then the last one I could leave as a runner and see how, how high we ever go and play. Play with house money. So that's why we do that. So now this is for stocks that have an implied volatility that's higher than 50, stocks that move a lot. And I'm gonna show you examples after I go through this. So now let's talk about stocks that don't move as much. So let's say you're playing with stocks that have an implied volatility less than 20%. So now you can look for stock prices that are a little bit higher. So now you can look for stock prices that would basically account for 10% of your account. All right. But you're still keep you're still keeping the five to 15% per trade, and you're still keeping that one to five percent per contract. We're still keeping that. The only difference is that we can look for higher stock, higher price stocks because they don't move as much, which means they'll be cheaper. So let me let me let me do an example. So the same same thing on um, five hundred dollars. The stock before when it was volatile, we were looking for stocks that were up to like twenty five dollars per share. But now we can look at stocks that are fifty dollars per share, maybe even seventy five, because the fact that the stocks are less volatile, that will mean that it will be cheaper to buy the contract. All right? Because we're still, go ahead. Someone had a question? 
Everything clear? All right. So um, we're still spending the same budget. It's just um, $50, $50 a share is the max that we could, we could trade. So now let's look at some actual examples and, um, and go over our budget. All right. Go to, first, I'm going to go to a more volatile stock, and then I'll go to a less volatile stock so you guys can see the difference. And you guys see my screen in a second. So as you can see, this is Palantir. And I'm looking on Robinhood. So it's not quite at 50, because I think I did say like 50% or more. But it is this is a pretty volatile stock, if you know anything about Palantir. It's fairly volatile. All right. So you'll notice that um right here the one strike out the money um, is this your primary option platform no thinkorswim is my primary option platform but i used to i started off using um thinkorswim i mean robinhood so and for teaching purposes it's very easy um you guys what do you guys mostly do thinkorswim yeah i like thinkorswim so yeah, let me show you on thinking some. I'll show you the same thing on thinking some. Well, well, yeah. I mean, it 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 is like you said is easier with Robinhood. It's like more simple, you know. Yeah, it's more simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking some mm -hmm. way to look. But right. I'll show you on thinking some though, because um, I'm always doing Robinhood for these classes. I just started mostly doing um thinking some maybe, but I think it's some, so I'll just pull it up. All right, share. All right. All right, so you guys see my finger swim. All right, so I said talent here, P L T R. So I'm thinking some you already know you go to trade tab and then you can type in what you're looking for. So let's just look at the options expiring this week. All right. So I was looking at the near the money, I was looking at the 18.5 call. Yeah, the 18.5 call. So right here you'll see that the 18.5 call. Um, what were I looking for again? The volatility. All right. So let's go to the 18.5. This one right here. So that's the one that we're looking at. All right. Um, so you'll notice right here, implied volatility right here. You guys see that? So that's where you find your implied volatility. And I was saying stocks that were like 50% or above were considered more volatile. This kind of like didn't make the cut today, but depending on the day, it'll make the cut, you know. So this is an example of a volatile stock. So now if we have what um 25 to 75 dollars to play with then we can buy two contracts at 32 dollars. you guys see that so that would be one trade where i'll be able to buy two contracts at this price so if i wanted to get in more contracts i can look at the 19 dollar call for um what is it for um basically 13.50, basically between 13 and $14 a contract. So that way I can buy maybe three, four, up to five contracts. You guys, you guys see what I mean? So that, so that's how I would play with the $500 account if I was to buy these options. All right. So this is a volatile stock, an example of a volatile. All right. So now, an example of a uh, low volatility stock would be something like AT&T. AT&T barely moved. So now let's look at the volatility, 22%. It's, it's, it's less than half of 
the previous. So this moves way less, but look, oh, um, I should add some more um, settings on this so you can see. But that's one thing um, you have to add on to, how do you add? So, so. Um, basically, there's a way for you to see theta and vega and all that, but um, I forgot how to add the column on this. Is it this one? Yeah, right here. All right. So you can go to right here. And then now what I want to do, I want to add, um, I want to look at the theta. Or theta. The theta. And I want to look at um, the delta. All right, well, add that. So now I got columns for theta and delta. You guys see that? So, um, so here's the thing. Um, if you look at, all right, let's go back to PLTR. I can show you the theta, the theta and delta. So now if you look at the, if you look at the $18.5 for you'll see that the delta is 50. And as a, like, I don't always do this rule depending on how much it moves, but a safety rule would be to try to aim for at least 30%, 30 delta or higher. So these two kind of fall into that range, sort of. So um, that's how I look at these two. But look at the delta and then look at the theta. So you um basically if it moves a dollar you make 50 but every day doesn't move you're losing seven you're losing seven dollars versus this one where you're losing five but it's, it's you're losing more of what you paid for so you're actually losing more all right so now let's look at so because when you're first starting trading options theta will kill you so now you look at um at and t much smaller volatility let's look at the price range Right here, one out the money, you're only paying $11 for this. You see that? $11 and you have a 35 delta and your theta is low. You're only losing $3 a day. So do you guys see that? And then if I, if I want to super out the money, this right here, it, 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 I probably wouldn't even play with that. I would just stick to this one. You know what I mean? Any questions? You guys have any questions? What's the average implied volatility you look for? Because um, 40, 47% was too high, right? No, no. So what, what I was saying was two different scenarios. One scenario when you have a high implied volatility and one scenario when you have a low implied volatility. You could trade either one. It's just knowing um, knowing the volatility that of what you're trading. You know what I mean? Yeah, like... I think with Tesla, Tesla would be considered like a high. high yeah, Tesla would be high, definitely. All right, let's look at Tesla. CSLA. Tesla would be high. Look at Tesla, it's above 50%. So 50% and above is considered high. And um, below that would be low. 20% and lower would be really low, you know? So that's an example. And, that, and now that like you could see, so like, for example, let's look at the, the at the money options for Tesla. Tesla right now at the money is, is uh, for Tesla right now is, is 1,088. So this 1,095 is, is, a, is um, one out the money, right? Um, but you can see Tesla now you have a delta of 50, but look at this data guys. Can somebody tell me what is the theta for this 1,095 call on Tesla? It's alarming. Anybody? Anybody? Negative four? 400? Yep, so, you, so if Tesla don't move, and one day you're losing $400. Damn. Yeah. Theta. <laughs> That's why options are very dangerous and you got to know which option to pick because you could lose all your money by the time you make your coffee in the morning the next day. State of decay. State of decay. So 
So this is why. Oh, my fault. I didn't know y'all can hear me, man. My fault. Let me hear you, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, all right. Just no, let me mute your screen. But um, but yeah. So um, uh, again, we um, if you guys are interested in the, in the recordings, um, I'll put the link in the chat one more time. Uh, and also, um, I also have a YouTube channel, um, so you can find information on my coffee page. Um, so, so, so yeah, so this is what I'm saying. So understand, first of all, to, to, to get this option, the bid is, is 1940, the ask is 1970. So this is probably going to cost you about $1,955 to get in. And after you pay this $1,900, if tomorrow this doesn't move, you're gonna lose $400 of that immediately. Yeah, you guys understand? Just, just, just from a day going by. So this is why it's very, um, it's very risky playing these options because you need huge moves, you know, where, where your theta is, is, is really, um, you know, challenging and, and beating your, your, your delta. I mean, your delta is beating your theta. So that's an example. All right. Um, but let's look at SPAR. So notice that, you know, you see the implied volatility. It should go up as time goes by. That's just how implied volatility tends to work. Um, but even if, but here's here's the thing. You look at so now the the less time on the options, that usually the higher the theta decay. So let's get to some of the other money. All right. So for example, look at this one right here. So it will cost you one thirty to buy this um this option. The delta is forty eight. So what what is the um the theta, how much money would you lose um, in a day on these? 130. All right. Now understand why it's 130. It's 130 because this is a zero day option. Um, it expires tomorrow. So the day that you buy it is the day that it expires. And you know that options if the option is not in the money by expiration, then all of these are going to expire worthless. You understand? So right now, these are out the money. So all of these are going to go to zero if the price doesn't move. You guys follow? So, so now, a lot of times with these options, when it does move, you're going to get high theta. So every time this moves a dollar, this option is making forty eight dollars. You understand? So you so you're able to make more money um, in less time with these options, but it's it's more risky. But if you're if you're a scalper or a day trader, it might make sense for you to play these because you're in and out with it. You're not really staying in the play to really see what it can do. You're more in and out with it. All right. So does anybody have any questions? No questions. So I got a question. Go ahead. Um, I guess how do you determine what your strike price is based on like what the stock price is at and how much you're willing to put up for it? What where the stock price is at and how much you think it's gonna move by a certain time. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's all about the move. So, so Okay, but to figure out where you think it's gonna move to, like, is that where you study the charts or? Yeah, that's where you study the charts. That's all okay. chart, charts and, or any other reason you might think like news or anything else that, that can move the price that you might use as the edge. But that's where your edge comes in. So like, for example, so like, let's, so let's look at the charts right now. So let's say we go to um, SPY, right? And SPY's been moving, um, but, as a matter of fact, I'll show you how I made money off, off this one, actually. Um, 
Let's put this five. Let's look at this one. Um, but I already had a SPG two. All right, so this is SPQ, and this is on the four hours. So I'm gonna go to the one year, one day. So T, you know, think and swim also also allows you to chart your options. So this is the charts going back to the February. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer to reach recent times. So now I'm zooming in, right? And um, now, matter of fact, this 117. Hold on, what, what day am I? 1117. Um, this is 1220, 1220. So this is last week. All right. So last week, this is okay. So this is this is today. This is yesterday. All right. So yesterday, I hopped in, I hopped into this play on Friday. Right, Friday? Yeah, Friday. So Friday, um, I, I hopped into some at some point in here and I kept going down. But the main thing was the main thing that told me that I was going to keep going down was you see this right here. You see how it's making um, lower highs, like a, like, like a down staircase going down the stairs. Right. Yeah. That's how you, that's, that, that's how you know we're in a downtrend when it's making lower highs and lower lows. You understand? So, that right there is how you know if you're in an uptrend or downtrend. So I see that we're in a downtrend. And um, if I go to small time frame, I'll go to the one hour and I'll zoom in. Um, right. So I just, I noticed right away while, while this was happening during the day, I seen that, look, we're making, lower lower highs and i seen that this was a resistance that the line was not breaking through so at some point i think i hopped in somewhere in here or in here i don't, um i have to go back and check exactly where i hopped in but once i seen that we were, we were going lower making lower lows that was my indication to hop in and um get in so that's about it for today guys um thank you for popping up and um, sign up for my coffee if you're interested in the recording. All right. Thank you, everybody. Last class of the year tomorrow. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, bro. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. See you guys tomorrow. Close everything. And the link for my coffee is in the chat for those interested. I also do one-on-ones. Throwing that out there. All right. Bye. Yeah, thank you.